never before in my lifetime <clears throat> has um, the brevity of life become such an issue and so apparent. It's always on everybody's mind, you know, what's the death count? Oh, yeah. uh, how many people are infected? You know, what's the recovery rate? Um, but that, that's actually good because the Bible tells us what is your life? It's but a vapor. It appears for a moment and it vanishes away. So people are actually right. They're just looking to the wrong sources to fix the problem. Now, the fact of the matter is you can't fix the problem because every soul that's born, God stamped with an expiration date. You're going to die. Your life at best is a vapor. There's vapors show up in different ways. We got a shop down the road or down the couple of units down that's called the vape shop. <laughs> you want to see some vape? That's some vape. That's what a vapor is. A cloud. Not all clouds are the same and they don't stay the same. Some vapors are real strong and then they weaken out and then they come back. Man's life is like that. There's times that you're popular and everybody knows you. And then there's times you're a nobody. <laughs> and you come back and eventually that little cloud is going to disappear. And you probably won't even remember it was there. It'll be gone. That's a man's life. The same way. David is a good example of a good vapor. So we'll call this message a victorious vapor. Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. He says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Let's just look at the, the verse here. We'll just break it down by word or phrase or whatever we end up doing. <laughs> the first thing I want to look at is the word so. The first word of our verse. So. That's the address. That's who's being addressed in our uh, verse here. The so is found in verse uh, 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score year, years, yet is their strength, labor, uh, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Okay, so the word so means because. Normal life spans only about 70 to 80 years. <clears throat> According to the Bible, that's what you can expect. A normal one. Now you might get cut down early. <laughs> and you might live a little longer. But the norm is 70 to 80 years. So because of that, you should start doing some planning. One of the great tragedies of youth is stupidity. The fact of the matter is, you don't start planning for your life until it's about over. Most people don't prepare for life until they've already lived it and they're about to die. Then it's too late. If you've only got 70 or 80 years, you better start planning for it right now. And if you're already halfway there, you're way behind. <laughs> David said, I found out something real quick. We've only got a short time on this earth. It's only going to be about 70 to 80 years. So because of that, we better put a thinking cap on. Start figuring some things out. Look at verse 7. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. So... Because our secret sins are judged here as well as eternity, we better start counting up the days. <laughs> if you've only got about 70 to 80 years, and God can judge you right now as well as in eternity, you better start counting how many good years you want. Get rid of some of them secret sins. <laughs> Look at verse 3. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. So because God has a limited time offer of mercy to man, you better start counting your days. It will expire at some point. When you die, 
opportunity is finished. That will be the limited time offer that is off the table. <laughs> okay, that's the address. Now let's see the request David made. He says, so teach us. Now this is a wise man, David. And he's saying, I need some learning. I need you to teach me something. That's saying a lot. Most men wouldn't be able to accept anybody teaching them anything. <laughs> Here David's saying, I recognize I don't know everything. I know I've only got 70 to 80 years, but teach me to count those days. It's not enough to know you've only got so many years. Are you counting the days? Do those days count? You know, when a person goes into the hospital and they're terminal, the doctor comes out and says, you've only got six months or whatever to live. At that point, does every day begin to count? For that person, it probably does. Because it's been, been made apparent to them, I'm going to die soon. David's saying right here, you've got 70 to 80 years, and every day you better make count. Hmm. Look at uh, chapter 81, Psalm 81, verse 11. Psalm 81, verse 11. He says, But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. <clears throat> God said, I tried to teach them, <clears throat> but they wouldn't listen to me. Man gets education from the sources he chooses. You can't force a kid to learn anything as bad as we try to, you go to school and the teacher will sit there and she'll, she'll try to incentivize it. You know, maybe it's with a hickory stick, but <laughs> you're going to learn this material. <clears throat> but if that child refuses to learn, he can't be taught. That's Israel. God said, I was trying to teach them. <clears throat> Can you imagine that? God. The Almighty said, I wanted to teach these people, and they wouldn't learn. God couldn't teach them. No, they refused it. God's not going to force you to learn. That's your choice. He says, my people would not hearken to my voice. Verse 12. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. <laughs> they educated themselves. <laughs> that didn't work. I can't say, I don't understand math, so I'm going to make up my own math. <laughs> that doesn't do you any good. Verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. <clears throat> Look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 17. <clears throat> Psalm 90, David said, teach me. I need some, I need some education. <laughs> I'm stupid. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, verse 16. He says, Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? A lot of people in this world trying to get wise, they want worldly wisdom, but they don't want it from God. That's, they're going to pay prices for pleasure thinking they're wise in getting what they really wanted, but it's not from God, therefore it's not going to benefit them. It's going to be bad news. Look at uh, Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verse 25. Here's an example of a man being wise in the flesh, but not toward God. Proverbs 21, verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him. Okay, so this is a slothful man. His desire is what? Sleep. Laziness. <laughs> so you know what he does? He is very wise in engineering a way to become lazy. We see it right now. The local officials have said, if you want to do business, we're not going to stop you. The lazy people have said, I can't work. 
there's a line in the street, I might get COVID. <laughs> I mean, that's what's going on. They're engineering and they'll work harder at not working than it would take them just to go down there and do some work. <laughs> That's his slothful man. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Mm. We better get some education in the right places. John chapter 3. Here's why a man won't go to God to get an education. John 3, verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. Hmm. Man knows what he's going to get when he goes to God. <laughs> That's... Well, he's going to get absolute truth. Mm -hmm. You're not going to fool God. You're not going to hide any secret sin from him that he's not going to find out. No. So man doesn't want to go to him because they can hide it from their boss. They can hide it from their buddies. You can't hide it from God. He said the man who wants proper teaching will come to God that his deeds may be reproved so that he can get better. But a man who just wants to continue in the same path of wickedness, he doesn't want any part of God. Now think of what a drastic change it must have been when Jesus Christ showed up on the scene. That's the light of the world showed up. God in flesh. Don't you know that it just drove the scribes and the Pharisees crazy? That's two opposing forces. Light and darkness. And the two hate each other. So when Jesus shows up, says, Here's the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They say, No, sir, it's you obey me or else you're out. You give me some alms and you walk this many miles on this day and you don't do this. And if you'll take the money that was supposed to go to your parents and give it to the temple, then we'll give you a pass. <laughs> Okay, all of those crooked things. No wonder they didn't want to be around Jesus. Because he was the truth and the way. Light, pure light. Came into that darkness. And you know what happens with light? You can't deny it. You know, if you can't sleep at night. And then finally about, uh, oh, about 4.35 o'clock. All of a sudden, you'll f suddenly be able to sleep because you got to get up in 20 minutes. <laughs> and you go to sleep, and that's some of the best sleep. But all of a sudden, something happens. Dawn. When the light of the sun shows up, it forces you to wake up. There's something about it. You've got to take some extra precautions to not get up not be awake when that sun comes up so you've got to get some blackout curtains you've got to do some things to make dark that's what this world's doing they're engineering as hard and fast as they can to block out the light because you can't deny it in acts acts chapter 28 acts 28 verse 27 it says, for the heart of this people is waxed gross. <laughs> Could you imagine that? God saying, I'm looking down there and something is just grossing me out. It's the heart of those people. Of all the things that could have grossed him out, it was the people who looked good on the outside, but he saw that heart and it was wicked. And their ears are dull of hearing. They don't want any teaching. Their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and they should be converted, and I should heal them. They don't want healing. They're enjoying the mess they're in. They don't want an answer. They want to just keep on keeping on in whatever misery they're in. In Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. If you go to God for teaching, it won't be long before you've come across this Theory right here, not a theory. It's um, I don't know what to call it, what you call it, but this is 
No, this is this is good. This is uh, if you're trying to pursue God, God will soon teach you this right here. Luke eleven verse one, and it yes yeah, statue, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. God wants to teach you to pray. Notice what it does not say. Teach us how to pray. Catholic Church can do that. You can get a book of prayers. That's not what they're asking here. He didn't say teach us how to pray. He said teach us to pray. Little did he know that was going to be answered. Your problems is God teaching you to pray. When you face issues, God's saying, I want to hear from you. That's God teaching you to pray. Listen up. God's teaching. Okay, we've seen the address and the request. Let's see the inquest. Psalm um, chapter, what am I? 90 verse 12. <laughs> Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days. That is, they're soon going to end. So teach us to number them. Now, he already told us he knew what the number was going to be. Remember? You're only going to live 70 to 80 years. Now he said, teach us to number them. Well, every, every kid begins this numbering system <laughs> with a vengeance. It's my birthday in three days. <laughs> That's right. They know the numbers then. Now don't ask them when they get in the math class. Yeah. But, but, but when their birthday is coming up, they become, you know, math wizards. <laughs> He's saying right here, we ought to be numbering our days in light of God teaching and God's correction. Look at Psalm 39. Psalm 39 verse 4. Psalm 39 verse 4. This is not a popular verse. <laughs> if you start numbering your days, it's going to be an obvious conclusion right here. Psalm 39, verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Huh? Yeah? There's nothing you can do about your end approaching quickly. It's coming. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. There's nothing this world can do. They can try to seclude everybody. They can turn them all into hermits. They can shut every business down. If you're going to get sick and die, you're going to get sick and die. God's got a way to get you sick. <laughs> You've got to breathe. It's his air. If he wants to put something in it, he'll put something in it. <laughs> he says that I may know how frail I am. Man is not powerful. In your youth, you think you're invincible. But the longer you live, the less invincible you find yourself. All it takes is a twisted ankle and you're a weakling. <laughs> Get a hangnail, stub your toe, and you're a little sissy. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we recognize how frail we are, then we'll run to something much stronger. The thing that is the most strong is God, and you can rest in Him. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32 verse 29. Deuteronomy 32, verse 29. It says, Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Now, we don't talk about death just because we're morbid, but we know that death is just the opening to eternity. <laughs> and if you'll consider what's going to happen, then you'll start making changes in the meantime. If a man doesn't consider his latter end, he won't make any change right now in the meantime. 
Eternity is based on what you do right now. Heaven is not an equal opportunity employer. It's not. We think of fair down here. Oh, yeah. Well, you want it to be fair, don't you? Well, if you worked hard for God, you'll get more in eternity. If you didn't, you won't get as much. You would consider that fair if you were the employer. <laughs> John chapter 9. John 9 verse 4. We should number our days because there's coming a day when opportunity ceases. John 9 verse 4. Jesus Christ himself says this. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. You got some opportunities today you'll never have again. You won't see this day ever again. What happens today is engineered by God. The opportunities are put in place by God. Therefore, you better work today because you won't get today again. Night's coming when nobody can work. Better number your days. Better consider your end. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 verse 16. He says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's a little verse, but it says a lot. <laughs> First of all, you're not going to redeem the time if you've not realized it needs redeeming. <laughs> if you've not got any regrets, you won't make any changes. If you've not recognized your wickedness, you won't go to God to get it cleansed. So he says, redeem the time. Realize that you've wasted some. And you need to redeem it. He says, because the days are evil. A lot of people don't even recognize the days are evil. You cannot watch anything on TV nowadays. They have perverted it all. Everything has got some sort of homosexual in it. It's got filthy language. I mean, everything. If it's not the show, it's the commercials. It's just wickedness. Okay, the days are evil. Don't get lulled into apathy by this world. The days are evil. If you'll recognize that, then you'll get busy redeeming the time. Our time is only limited. Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So, we've got a limited time on this earth, and we can redeem time, we can buy back time, by doing this, knowing the will of the Lord. Hmm. He's not going to force you to do that. That's something you choose. Just like David was choosing to number his days. We can choose to obey the will of the Lord if we'll figure it out. Now, some things he hides on purpose to see if you're serious about searching for. And then he'll reveal it. Okay, so we've seen several things. We've seen the address, the request, the inquest. Now let's see the blessed. Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. The end of our verse. He says, uh, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Okay. If you'll apply your heart to wisdom, you'll get blessed. It's not man's wisdom, it's God's wisdom. Can't get anything any better than that. You find these people that make all this money in the stock market. And the whole thing is they're so wise that they can forecast and predict what's going to happen in the future so if you invest with them so if you invest with them they know which companies are going to make money and which companies are not and when you need to buy and when you need to sell and all that stuff if a stockbroker is too good they say it's insider trading mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what the whole system was built on <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me but guess what? God knows everything. Literally. 
If you invest with him, that investment can't fail because he knows the end from the beginning. That's a good investor. That's a good stock market. What do you call them? Broker, stock broker. <laughs> they, they break you. That's right. Proverbs 23, 23. He says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Let me ask you a question. If nobody's selling it, how can you buy it? Look at the verse. What's it say? Buy the truth and sell it not. How are you going to buy it if everybody refused to sell it? <laughs> okay. So what he's saying is buy the truth. Do everything you can to get truth. And don't let it go. Now, the way you buy truth from God is not with money. It's with your dedication. You give everything you are to it. And then you'll follow the truth. And you've sold yourself out to follow truth. That's a good deal. You know what Ahab did? He sold himself to work wickedness. He bought wickedness. Buy truth and don't get rid of it. Proverbs 2, look at chapter 2, verse 6. Proverbs 2, verse 6. There's only one place you can find wisdom in this world, and it's in the Word of God. There's people who think they're wise, and they've got all these smart aleck things they can say, but in the light of eternity, it doesn't make any difference unless it came from God anyway. All the wisdom a man needs, God's put in a book. Proverbs 2, verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. It's not going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> but it will come out of the Word of God. Now, I can quote the Word of God to you. I can read it to you. And there's wisdom. But it didn't generate with me. It generated with God. You want wisdom? You want to be blessed? It only comes from one place. God. Nobody else is big enough to do anything but him. Look at Jeremiah 8. I like verse 7 too. Read it. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Mm hmm. Yeah, protector. He stores it up for us. Jeremiah 8, verse 9. It says, The wise men are ashamed. That is worldly wisdom. They thought they knew something. God showed up and suddenly they didn't know nothing. <laughs> They're ashamed. They're dismayed and low and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. If you reject the word of God, you're stupid. <laughs> Says the word of God. <laughs> Believe it or not, nobody can uh, prove it wrong. You can spend a lifetime trying to disprove it and just prove how stupid you are. Or you can just follow it. The Word of God's where wisdom's at. Right. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 verse 28. We've got a short life. The sooner it's over, the better if you're a Christian. <laughs> one day we'll be out of here. However, in the meantime, we've got one thing that's prominent for a Christian, the Word of God, and following it. He says in our verse, Luke eleven twenty eight. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the Word of God and keep it. It's not enough to hear the word of God. See the last two words? Keep it. That is obey it. We got a bunch of, a whole population of people that have gone to Christian school because their parents made them to. And you know what they heard? A lot of word of God. Well, that's good. But they didn't keep it. Unless you're going to commit yourself to obeying it, 
It doesn't help you. It doesn't give you blessings. It gives you curses because you knew it and you didn't do anything with it. Mm, that's dangerous. So we've got two things to do as a Christian, to be blessed, and we've only got a short time to do it. We've got to get in the Word of God, and then we've got to obey whatever it tells us. And then we'll be blessed while the rest of this world can do whatever they want. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. He said, I've determined, I know what God's word is, and I'm following, I'm going after it hard. 